website design trends in 2021 and beyond. I am Sabari. I'm Chief Strategy Officer with DHN, Daily Host News. We are a part of Zetna Technologies, a cloud distributor and a traditional host in that sense. And uh, I'm absolutely delighted to have Mr. Philip Borkov, CEO from Site.pro, to talk about the design trends, what's happening right now. Welcome, Philip, for this uh, session today. Thank you. Uh, uh, let me start off with the most happening topic for today, which is uh, the pandemic, you know, which is what everybody's talking about right now. And as you may very well appreciate, a lot of people have moved from traditional brick and mortar uh, way of working in terms of physical offices to more online. And quite a lot of organizations have become online or have come online as a result of this pandemic coming to the fore. How do you think that the pandemic has impacted the web design industry as a whole? I want to get your thoughts on you know, what do you see? Uh, when I was in India four years ago, I was shocked that people are uh, caring about Roy. My first time uh, start understanding what is Roy. And uh, during the pandemic, all world start caring about Roy. So mm -hmm. everybody start uh, calculating how much they spend and how much they get. And website builders are best here because people get results much faster and cheaper. So what we see is that a lot of designers lose jobs because they were not professional, professional or they just do things that robots can do. But other designers rise their like salaries very, very fast. So there's like two types, people who are losing jobs and people who are getting a lot of inquiries. So it's like very interesting trend. Designers start doing websites much faster. They, for complicated solutions, there are one type of designers and for easy solutions, other type of designers. And as many companies bankrupt, for example, big companies, not like Microsoft, but a lot of huge companies closing their branches and a lot of good employees are coming to the market. Maybe it's not related, I don't know, to website builders or the hosting industry, but a lot of good programmers, excellent UX designers, a lot of different staff, uh, good uh, growth hackers, they just quitting their companies because companies closing their branches. So m mostly trends, people are switching to website builders, uh, easy websites also switching to website builders so people can get results much faster. And what is important, all people calculating how much they spend and how much they get. And one more thing, earlier people care about how website looks. Now people, people care how many how, how conversion is good, how good is conversion, uh, and about things like that. How many inquiries I get per day, how to get new traffic, how to optimize for sale. They don't anymore care about, I would like to be uh, the, the same as sunset, but green. You know, <laughs> designers will understand me. Yeah, I think that's an interesting point because uh, traditionally people thought, okay, I need to get online, right? That was the primary request earlier, but it's no longer, you know, they want to get online, they want to analyze the traffic, they want to look at data trends, how many leads I'm generating, how many conversions I'm doing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So absolutely, uh, very well said, uh, Philip, I think that's very relevant. And um, if you look at uh, in the websites, there are typically two kinds of websites. One a website where you have a lot of coding done by, as you said, you know, programmers who, who do that work and then some designers doing some work, the work as well. And then if you have this another set of websites, which are typically built with DIY tools like website builders as well, without any complex coding or anything like that, right? Um, which one do you think is suitable for whom and how can a common man decide, you know, which one to go for? Uh, so first of all, first of all uh, there are old-fashioned uh, business owners. So old-fashioned business owners, they, they just think, I come to the design studio, order project, wait for three months, get results, and uh, I'm happy. But now there are a lot of type of new entrepreneurs who understand that they need a website just in a day, in a week, or we can make it themselves. And uh, this trend is now very, very active. And uh, bef between coding and the website builders, there are also one uh, very important choice. There are complexity of the website, how, how it's complicated. For example, for easy, like as designer call it, uh, uh, like business cards, 
So you can easily make this with a website builder. For websites, like a little bit difficult, like easy e-commerce, maybe like up to 100 uh, orders per day, or like a beautiful, beautiful website with motions, with the parallax. So usually people now switch half, I think, website builders, half of them are coding. If a website is very complicated, of course, it's coding. And if it's a professional website, like with a lot of inquiries, with a lot of uh, calculators, uh, it, of course, it needs coding. And uh, just in the long term, ever complicated solutions will come to website builders or to something competitive solutions. But right now, just website builders going this from easy to more complicated, complicated things. So when the website is very complicated, you need somebody. But what is important is that web design studios start doing a lot of things with website builders. Uh, we get inquiries from companies like we did the, like 1,000 website a month with website builders. Can you imagine 1,000 website a month with website builders? They just contacted that. Can you make a better, better integration or something like that? And what we also see is that, uh, for example, for us, domains was like a secondary business. But now we just have a huge growth of domains and inquiries and purchases because people start uh, caring and they're really much more interested in, uh, in uh, making websites with website builders. So maybe mm -hmm. about domains we increase maybe sales of about about ten times, just in about three six months. Yeah, well, that's an incredible statistic because um, as you quite rightly said earlier, uh, customers want results fast, right? So they don't have the time to spend several months to go and design complex websites right now. So they typically look for easy. Uh, the, the ones which give you better customer experience, which are all being tried and tested already, those kind of tools like ready-made website builder tools. And uh, yeah, those, those definitely are ready to go. You can just flip it up and running pretty quickly as well. You have templatized approach for that as well. Right? So you have different templates for different industry sectors, and then you can templatize them as well. Right? So, uh, Of course. Yeah. And, how, and how, how the difference is, just look five years ago. Five years ago, if you see top domain registrators, Registrars, there are no website builders. Now it's one. Maybe in the next five years will be five website builders in top five domain regist uh, registrars. Mm -hmm. So just just how the situation changes. Absolutely, absolutely, right. And, and uh, as, as you know, let's be very practical here. You know, there are a lot of free website builders which are available in the market for customers to look at, right? And what sets your company, right, Site Dot Pro, your website builder? You know how different it is from from somebody, something which is freely available in the market? And, and what do you think are the USP for your kind of product offering compared to something which is available yeah. for free? Yeah, we have uh, like two different markets. It's like B2B and also B2C market. So from B2B point of view, we what is important and, and hidden, people do not see it, but we really care about every customer and about his request. For example, I would like to have RTL. Can you imagine 50 builders in the market, only two builders have RTL, like right to left, Arabic, oh. Hebrew, Arabic, sorry, Hebrew and some other languages. Also, uh, we have awesome feature website import. By the way, website import provides better conversion than template selection. So if you take if you take hundred people who choose template and start creating websites, and choose hundred people who import their website and finish creating, so that guys that guys who started with import have better conversion to publish. And by the way, we're also very good in conversion because no, it's like hidden. Like when people buying website builders, they do not see conversion. But it's really number one in uh, hosting because how many people they put to builder, how many publishers they get, how many people upgrade. So it's very important thing. Also, of course, we have a lot of, uh, we have a good, nice brand. So people trust us because now during the last two years, appear have maybe 100 new website builders. From B2C point of view, we're just very good localized. Uh, for example, uh, if you're in Brazil, you can uh, use our product in Portugal. Your server will be in, uh, in Latin America. Uh, website is very fast because it's very optimized. So we are very, very fast. Also for B2B sector, we are also fastest builder uh, and also very good localized. And also for B2C sector, we were very cheap. By the way, with import, we increase, uh, when you start advertise import, we increase uh, registration about five times during one month. So when we get, get correct niche and blog, bloggers start uh, uh, like 
doing post about us, we increase registration five times during one month. And this wow. was like a, quite mm -hmm. was like ever free market because uh, vlog, when the vloggers start writing, one blogger sees or other, uh, see other bloggers. Yeah, so if yeah. they look big influence other, a lot, yeah, 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 yeah. And like, yeah. it's very, very, very good. And also we're, we're very cheap because if you go to like market leaders from the quantity of customers in B2C market, you will see prices like 20, 30 dollars. Like, oh my God, you pay $5 monthly yeah. and you just park your domain, have small website and get ads. Come on, $5 a month. And now we, we're starting in two months with a big killing feature with, and we plan to increase our traffic 100 times. So we now do preparation for servers. We do preparation for our infrastructure. So we really believe in our new solution and, uh, uh, and we have some really strategic and tactic games. And we now plan on the uh, end of, uh, maybe at the middle of August to start increasing tra traffic from the middle of August till the end of the year to increase traffic 100 times. It's only will with increase with uh, very cheap marketing without Google AdWords and uh, because I don't know how far but for us, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, the uh, customers are extremely expensive. So in uh, adult markets, uh, ads are extremely expensive. In growing markets like Africa, like maybe India, I don't know, in Lithuania some, somehow, uh, in some audiences, Google can still add, but in uh, adult markets, we're very, uh, so to get money from Google, you should be very competitive. And by the way, earlier we call it uh, Uberization, so we now call it uh, builder, Builderization. So a lot of people <laughs> using builders from like end customers and uh, uh, hosting companies, mm -hmm. so like that. Yeah, yeah. I think I mean, I'm, I'm absolutely excited to hear about uh, the new killer feature, what you mentioned. I'm looking forward to uh, the launch as well and, and see how it's going to shape up uh, uh, and, and change the industry as well. So thank you for those insights. Uh, uh, Philip, I believe, where are you right now, if I may ask? Where are you right now? I'm in Botswana. It's uh, nearby South Africa. Wow. Okay. Okay. And, and I believe you're probably exploring the African market quite extensively right now. And I guess you're going to be there for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. During the last six months, I meet maybe 100 hosting companies in Africa, maybe five registries at least. We try to do a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, common projects with, uh, with uh, registrars or registries. So we try to explore uh, to explore Africa. Ever in oh. Africa, uh, we created new new term. We call it dominity. Dominity it's how country is developed. So we can see like GDP, or you can see population of the country. But how we can compare India to US, or Africa to US, or for example Tanzania to US, mm -hmm. and we create a dominity cof. We will publish it uh, maybe this next week. Uh, we calculate how many domains per thousand capital. So for example, America have more than 200, Lithuania have 70, India have a little bit less. So how dominized country? And it shows that, for example, US is about 200 yeah. more, has 200 more domains per capita than Tanzania, as example. And okay. by the way, in, in Africa also, uh, maybe, maybe you have some additional questions about Africa, but I just have so inspired about this market uh, first of all, in Africa, they uh, have registries usually are in private hands. So uh, in some registries provide domains for free. Can you imagine? Some registries with our help start providing domains for free for first year. Wow. Other registries, can you imagine? For example, in Namibia, if you would like to register a domain, look, you need physically go to Namibia, uh, to Namibia and the registry, pay money, $200 for two years, wait two days okay you need to fill paper form and in two days you get the mail oh, okay so I was going to ask, my question was my next question was to you about africa only so i'm glad we talked a little bit about it but but what do you think are the key differences uh, in africa versus the rest of the world you, know, you have traveled quite a lot everywhere and you can see certain similarities in the market and certain differences in the market as well you know compared to the rest of the world what do you see uh, and what can we learn from Africa itself? So what I see that uh, hosting 
is a little bit dead in Africa because Facebook, Instagram, Google take everything. Because hosting is very expensive, very slow because they host in the US. Uh, and the domains are very expensive. And people just search the cheapest solution. The cheapest solution is Instagram and Facebook. And in, with that, because hosting is very expensive, domains are not competitive. People coming to these uh, cloud providers. And it's very bad for hosting industry. What is the uh, other difference? Uh, you have uh, our internet in our country start from cables. So everybody had cables and later we start using phones. But in Africa, differently. Cables not exist, 4G everywhere. And not everywhere, but usually 95% of internet, I think it will be 4G. So they start using internet from phones. And also what we can learn, they have mobile money. For example, they add money to mobile and they can easily switch money through, for example, I would like to move money to this guy. I just take my mobile phone, old Nokia, when and I'm money is on yeah. the side. Yeah, so it's very good. And what is very important, what we see is that government can regulate uh, easily whole economy. If government can regulate, for example, make domain cheaper or more expensive, whole economy goes up or down. And it's very... Very, very important. So we just see how, how government can easily create market or destroy market from the hosting view side. What we can see and learn from Africa. Okay, okay. Uh, and how do you see that happening? You know, do you see local governments generally helping and promote the technology awareness and promote uh, you know, online presence? How do you see that? Is that happening there? For example, it was in Rwanda, a topic is registry. For example, they have a deal, get domain for free for first year, get hosting for free and website builder for free and the mails for free for first year. So okay. they're really still emulating. And for example, as example in, uh, I don't know, Malawi, registry is in private hands. To register a domain name, you need to pay for two years about $200. So the, the way how easily small changes. And by the way, if you see also US in US, the most popular is .com, not .us, because somehow earlier US registry lose their power. So now happening the same in, in Africa in many countries. Uh, let me ask you one final question. Uh, right, let, let's assume I have a website, which is a traditional website, which is coded by a developer, which has been built there, etc. And can I move that website to a website builder? And what benefits can that really offer for me? So it's very important question because a lot of people moving their old websites to website builder, what is important? If old website wasn't mobile, new website becomes mobile. And one more thing, there are no any other technology how move website from any cloud provider like Wix, Weebly, Duda, and everything else. I do not have FTP. And people, they're crying because they were unable to get website from Weebly or from any other provider. So with website import, they just in one click get website from any cloud provider, any cloud website builder, and start editing it. And it's huge benefit, benefit for them. As I said, we have huge traffic and uh, people interested in, in the website import. So, so I think it's, uh, it's uh, our future and, uh, and the quantity of uh, importing websites is really growing each week. Yeah, I think the import feature, what you said, is probably helping you as well, right? And I think the customers are starting to see the real benefits of it. I want to thank you for that rapid fire, quick discussion to get some insights about uh, the website trends in 2021 and beyond. Uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us in the middle of Africa. I do hope that your expansion plans and your new product launches go well as well. And uh, please stay safe and travel safe as well. Thank you. Thank you, Sabari. Thank you. Great to talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.